Hi guys, this is Esther. So today's video is a bit different, but today I'll be sharing how I got into a dental school in the UK, as well as some tips that I picked up during the process. So I hope this can be helpful to anyone interested in dentistry and especially for international students who want to study dentistry in the UK. So I'll take you guys through my timeline first and let me know in the comment if you guys have any specific questions. So I know a lot of people start their preparation like a few years before they apply to dental school. However, in my case, it was a bit of a sudden decision that I wanted to apply for dentistry. So I started my preparation in the summer that I graduated from biomedical sciences, which was around June, July time. And in terms of the actual timeline, this can vary a lot depending on the university. But after sending off my application in October, I did my interviews in December and January and got my final results during February, March and April. So the first thing that I jumped to was UCAT prep, which is an entrance exam for both medicine and dentistry in the UK. And UCAT is basically an aptitude test, which tests your ability to think logically and solve problem under time pressure. So I think the most common preparation period is from six weeks to two months. And because I had a very limited amount of time, I think I spent around six weeks, which consisted of two weeks of getting familiar with the questions and then four weeks of intent practice. And because it's an aptitude test, I personally felt like there was a limit to how much you can improve with practice unless you train for years. So that's why I'd recommend a maximum of two months for a practice. And in terms of the resources, I used MedicMind's UCAT book to go over the question types and some of the general tips and Medify for all the practice questions and mocks. And I also used some of the official UCAT websites question banks. So I personally struggled a lot with the first section, verbal reasoning, where you really need the ability to read and understand passage really quickly. So instead of getting too stressed about it, I decided to just aim for an average score for that section and then worked extra hard for the other three. And that honestly worked out really well for me. So I'd say if you have a limited time like me, it might be better to focus on your strengths rather than trying to perfect everything. Another tip that I'd give is to do lots of time practice because UCAT is a very time pressured exam. And I think with lots of time practice, you get a natural feel on how long you should spend on each question and more importantly, when to skip. I think skipping is such a key strategy in the UCAT, so don't be afraid to move on if you don't know how to go about that question. And always, always go over the solutions, not just to see why you got that question wrong, but also to see um, whether there is a quicker or more efficient way to solve that problem. And just as a side note, I personally felt like the real exam was easier than the practice ones. And I think that's probably why I could get a higher score in my actual exam. Also, I forgot to mention this, but I really recommend practicing with a full keyboard that has a number pad and a mouse. And I also recommend learning the keyboard shortcuts to save your time. So moving on to work experience. Work experience is basically where you get to see what it's really like to work as a dentist and it usually involves shadowing a dentist's work for a week or two. So during my last month in London, I tried my best to find my work experience there just because I felt like it was more relevant to do it there than anywhere else in the world. And I know it can be super difficult to find one, especially if you don't have any connection like me. So what I did was I just went on Google Maps and searched all the nearby dental practices. And I tried to send as many emails as I could to all the practices, including the dentist. And I was lucky to get a reply from one orthodontist and I ended up shadowing there for one week. And I personally really recommend doing some kind of work experience not just to mention it in your personal statement or interview, but to get a real world insight into what the job is like, whether it's actually for you, and also to see some of the realistic and challenging part of working as a dentist. And because I only shadowed at an orthodontic clinic and not a general dental practice, I looked for an online work experience course and although they were virtual, I really appreciated the level of detail as some of them had a camera footage of actual procedures which gave me lots of insight about 
uh, more of the clinical side of dentistry so yeah i'd say try your best to find at least one work experience and really take your time to reflect back on it because what matters is what you learn from those experiences and not really how much you've done moving on to personal statement i think for me i spent more time on brainstorming and structuring rather than writing the actual content and i think with a solid plan in place it doesn't take too long to write an actual content so i know everyone approaches personal statement differently but i think those are the key things that you should include in your personal statement so they are firstly your personal motivation for studying dentistry second what you learned from your work experience and lastly the past experiences that show you've got the right skills and mindset to become a good dentist and a good dental student and it sounds very obvious but i think the most important thing in personal statement is to sound personal so i remember making sure that every sentence that i write reflects either my character or my story and i also think it's really important to back up all your points with evidence or your experience and i like following this specific format where i started with a quality that's important for a dentist like a communication skill for example and then i mentioned how i saw the value of that skill during my work experience and then talk about a time where i personally developed or practiced that skill so i think following the structure helped me to show both my experience and also my understanding about dental profession also i think it's so much better to focus and expand very well on few experiences rather than just listing all of them because I think what matters the most is what you've learned from that experience and how well you reflect on it. And finally, I really recommend having someone else read your personal statement, whether that's a teacher, friend, parent, or even a dentist. Um, just because I feel like if you read your own writing too many times, it's so easy to miss like a weak point or an awkward flow. I personally had mine read by one dental student and one dentist and their feedback were really helpful in terms of identifying areas to improve. And moving on to interviews, which was so scary to me personally, um, mainly because I didn't have any prior experience with formal interviews. so. Yeah, I had to do lots of practice on my own. The first step I'd give is focus on your story, your experience, and learn the core medical ethics rather than the scientific aspect of dentistry. Um, because after sending off my application, I remember spending lots of time learning those sciences behind dentistry. However, I've realized that those admission teams are way more interested in you as a person rather than your academic knowledge. So I'd say really take your time to reflect on your experience and always try to link them back to how they will help you become a good dental student as well as good dentist. And another thing I learned was that interviews feel very different depending on the university. So I'd say do a proper research into what interview format the university you're applying to is using. And also be ready to talk about why you chose that specific university. And another important thing is to learn the guidelines given by the GDC because these will form frameworks to answer most of the ethical questions. And for me, I often referred back to my work experience by saying how the dentist I saw used this GDC principle when interacting with patients. And I think that helped me to bring this real life example into my answer. And for practice, you guys might have seen from my vlogs, but I used flashcards. So I'd write an example question on one side and then bullet point my answer on the other side. And I kind of try to brainstorm my answer to as many questions as possible. And last tip I'd give is do lots of practice, especially if you are scared like I was. I recommend doing some kind of mock or if not possible, you can practice by yourself by speaking out loud, um, maybe by filming yourself or speaking in front of the mirror. I personally didn't do any mock and I just practiced by myself but I know lots of people do practices with their friends, parents or like teachers at school. And as for the resources, I used a book called MMI for UK Dental Schools 
which I found quite helpful for ethical scenarios and role play stations. So those were some key things in my application process. And for some final tips, I'd say, first of all, tell your own story and reflect on it. And I think reflection is what sets you apart because admission team is looking for people who can think deeply and who can learn from their experiences. And the next tip I'd give is to apply strategically and to do your own research. So I'd say know your strength and choose university which aligns with your strength. So every university will outline their selection process on their website. So for example, if you have a high UCAT score, you can, for example, choose university which ranks students based on their UCAT score. And finally, I want to give some tips for international students like me as I know dentistry is really competitive, like it only takes three to four students per school. And I think it's really easy to feel discouraged just by that fact. So I'd say first of all, make sure your academics are as strong as possible because I realized that all the international students would have almost perfect grades. So it's more of like a baseline rather than a standout. And especially try your best to get a high UCAT score because from my experience, I felt like if you score above 3000, you really have a good chance of getting an interview invite. And lastly, I'd say really learn well about the UK NHS system and also about the current issues on NHS dentistry because they want to know that you have a good understanding about UK as a country as well as its health system. So I think that is it for everything that I wanted to say. Um, all I can say is it is God who led me through this whole process and it is 100% God's grace that got me into those dental schools. So yeah, I hope this was useful and I'll see you guys in my next vlog.